Ansela, I'm from Tafwa, and I love to listen to today FM, today FM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam every afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Mulonila, I work at Golden Point Resort. I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Raki Raki. I'm Mary from Mandera. I love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. We love listening to Today FM, Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Jackie Spate and this is FBC News tonight. Multi-million dollar tax evasion uncovered by Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority. Ito K Affairs Ministry concerned with increasing reports of child abuse and bridging the trade gap between Fiji and Australia. A company is under investigation by the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority for under-declaring sales by more than $16 million to evade VAT and income tax derived through these sales. FERCA Chief Executive Viswanatha says the company was under-declaring sales for the past three years and the government has VAT and income taxes. Other businesses are being investigated for similar offences following complaints. Dust says FERCA continues to discover serious non-compliance in lodgement of VAT returns and payments. Taxpayers have also been reminded to engage registered tax agents because unregistered agents haven't been filing returns nor making payments. Dust says FERCA will not tolerate this and offenders will face the full brunt of the law. A Land Transport Authority employee has been charged for alleged corrupt practices by the Fiji Independent Commission Against Corruption. William Pawa Tuiono is charged with one count of bribery, dishonesty obtaining a gain, six counts of unauthorized modification of data, and seven abuse of office. Tuiono allegedly took money from eight people in April, promising them driving licenses. The eight individuals have also been charged by FICAC. Mohamed Zakaria, Muldeo, Avinesh Kumar, Madhu Vakatawa, Premwati, Ratuse Kove Uluimira, Jit Singh and Sevuloni Ndingitaki Mata are charged with one count of dishonesty obtaining a gain each. The matter has been adjourned to January 9th. The Fiji Australia Business Council says Fiji needs to upskill its workforce in order to bridge the trade imbalance between the two countries. President Dave Adney says Australia and New Zealand will always remain as Fiji's dominant trading partners. Rachel Nath has more. Fiji's import bill for Australia stood at $671 million for 2015 and $632 million for New Zealand. In contrast, Fiji's exports are nowhere close. $248 million in exports to Australia last year and only $58 million to New Zealand. We've got to focus on technology and training. And Australia's got a lot to offer Fiji in that regard. So we've got to carefully identify those areas. The business relationship, the political uh, environment with Australia now has been probably better than it's ever been. Australia and New Zealand are our closest trading partners and are seeing renewed interest from the Fijian government wanting to hold on to long-standing relations. The trading balance is huge and that is made up uh, then, then made up for as a result of revenues generated uh, through um, tourism, earnings through remittances and other less uh, visible sources of earnings. The trade imbalance isn't lost on the authorities. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama recently attended trade expos in Australia and Auckland and Fiji even has a trade commission set up. We have a potential to um, increase our exports into Australia and um, not, not only that but to export more high, high value products, uh, products that have uh, value addition done in Fiji. Statistics from Investment Fiji show we export more to the United States than we do to Australia and New Zealand. Singapore and China, meanwhile, top our import markets. Rachel Nath, FBC News. 
Fijian High Commissioner to New Zealand, Filimone Wangambava, is travelling to Christchurch today to visit earthquake-affected members of the Fijian diaspora. Meanwhile, a major rescue operation is underway in Kaikoura, New Zealand, which was severely damaged by an earthquake yesterday. Hundreds are stranded following the severe 7.5 magnitude quake and frightening aftershocks are continuing. TVNZ reports pregnant women, families and the elderly are being prioritised. There won't always be a pill for every illness. That was the comment made by the Minister for Health, Rosie Akbar, while opening the Antibiotics Awareness Week. Anna Ravulo has the report. Antibiotics are often misused by patients and in many cases may often do more harm than good. In our mission to combat antibiotic resistance in Fiji, we are very fortunate to receive tremendous support from WHO and the Global Fund. And not forgetting the collaboration with the uh, Consumer Council in creating awareness amongst our people. Akbar stresses that people must take the complete course of antibiotics prescribed and must not share with anyone else. The Antibiotic Awareness Week will increase awareness about antimicrobial resistance and promote the responsible use of antibiotics by engaging the general public, health professionals and policy makers and of course the other sectors that are instrumental to protecting our antibiotics. The Minister for Health says that antibiotics are becoming less effective due to antibiotics resistance which is one of the greatest threats today. Anna Ravulo, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, regional police officers learn about protecting women from violence and $4 million upgrade for airports communications equipment. Stay with us. It's me since the year right from the Rekiniki town. Our super breakfast show me my son taho jab breakfast show me rehta hai Ashmeer aur Sangeeta ke saath. Kese ke saath sunte sunte kyaara se do bhavi ji ka show jiten shaam ke. You know something? मैं हूँ श्वेता दुकुशन औसरी से लोग देखते हैं ईद का चांद लेकिन मेरा चांद तो मिर्ची एफ एम है हमारा नाम जाबीर है हम कुरनिविया नसोरी में रहता है मिर्ची एफ एम हम सब टाइम सुनता है मिर्ची एफ एम बहुत जुलू में मिर्ची एफ एम इज हॉट मिर्ची एफ एम इज हॉट Welcome back. This is FBC News. Every 8 out of 10 children in the Pacific experiences violence or abuse at some point in their life. The Itao K Affairs Ministry says sexual abuse of children is their biggest concern because they still live in a culture of silence and don't report such incidents. Kelly Vavala reports. Senior officials at the Itoke Affairs Ministry are concerned at the increasing reports of sexual abuse of children across Fiji most common crimes for th that's happening to children uh, it's sex crimes which uh, comprise about 56 percent so it's a very alarming uh, rate and that's where our concern is and uh, the next one is the physical assault which is about 33 percent so the children in Fiji are vulnerable uh, whether they are in towns cities or in the homes or of all the reports of violence received sexual offense of children is the most common Orisi Tukana from the Fiji Police Juvenile Bureau says sexual abuse statistics aren't showing any improvement. It's never gone down for the last uh, five years. Uh, the figure continues to rise and, um, uh, and also there's an increase in people coming forward and reporting um, uh, crimes against children or particularly sex crimes. The ministry hopes to come up with a solution through the review of its child protection contextualized manual. Authorities are worried about the psychological trauma that children live with as a result of sexual abuse. They urge victims to seek help from police or someone they trust instead of keeping it hidden because the effects of sexual abuse can last a lifetime. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Traditional attitudes and belief systems have impeded police response violence against women. This is the finding of a relig sorry, regional workshop to educate police in Fiji and the Pacific about how to tackle such matters. Ellen Stolls tells us more. Upper Ula Teimatamoa, a police constable in Samoa, says she paid little attention to matters pertaining to violence against women, but this has changed following the training. I think it's really important for us police officers that this training 
actually helps us with our work and how we deal with victims of violence, how we can actually, you know, become concerned about, you know, the issues that they're actually going through. Fiji Women's Crisis Center coordinator Shami Ali says despite the high rate of violence such as rape, inter-partner violence and violence against women and children, there is not enough work being done with police who are usually first responders in these situations. There is uh, you know, a lot of the traditional attitudes and the whole belief system based on religion, culture that exists and it really impedes the, the responses that police could give. Ali adds there is also a need for a unified message to be disseminated in the community. One of the problems is that different people going out give different messages and a lot of those messages are, are ill-informed without knowledge. So as long as we keep passing the wrong messages, we are not going to see the light of day on this issue. Other participants say the training has opened their eyes to many issues. More officers to be trained to, in dealing with domestic violence here. Yeah. Mm. Funded by the federal police, the training aims to equip officers through understanding gender dynamics, the causes of violence against women, and the relative laws to combat gender-based violence. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. People in Fiji and around the world gathered at popular lookouts to see the supermoon last night. The full moon was about 14% larger and 30% brighter than usual as it made its closest pass to Earth overnight. This was the brightest moon in almost 69 years and the next won't be seen until November of 2034. Police are searching for a 36-year-old man who's been missing from home since Saturday. Shelvin Nilesh Prasad of McCoy and Asino left home three days ago without informing his family and has not returned since. His family are concerned for his welfare as Prasad is known to have a mental illness. Anyone with information about his whereabouts is requested to call their nearest police station. We turn to sports now. Here's Jamie with all the very latest. Nakataki and good evening. Coming up in sports, FRU expresses disappointment with World Rugby Awards and Chiefs to host Crusaders in Fiji once again next year. Details after the break. This is Manin Rabu from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM. Only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sazakau from uh, Matukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Square Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic hit music. I'm Saini Sakio from Kashmir Lotaka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Fiji Rugby Union is disappointed that Fiji Sevens didn't win a single award at the World Rugby Function in London, England yesterday. Chief Executive John O'Connor says we are deserving nominees and the concern is being echoed by Arden fans, professional rugby players and other affiliates. Vashtinil Prasad has more. I think uh, their performance in 2016 um, outclasses it. Maybe our disappointment. Eh? Uh, we were quite hopeful, eh? uh, considering... Uh... Oceania Rugby, Flying Fijians, Wing Nemani Nandolo and other fans have also shared their disappointment via the social media. Meanwhile, Kolinisau will be part of the International Olympic Committee Awards function in Doha this week. Vashnail Prasad, FBC Sports. Fiji will once again be the host country for the Chiefs Super Rugby franchise when it takes on the Crusaders next year. The Chiefs will play the Crusaders on the 19th of May at the NZ Stadium in Suva. Vastal Prasad with the details. Chiefs Rugby is yet to say anything about the three-year deal announced by Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama. That's, that's not for sure, no. So Fortress Information Systems is the match promoter. Um, we'll work with the, the Fijian government and the other uh, parties and determine each year. It does depend on the draw obviously as to what games can be brought over here Asian for, for all of us to be involved in. We are full to, to support the initiative uh, uh, of being the super we all see the interest. Work begins now for the Fiji Sports Council to prepare the venue in the next six months.
already commenced with our discussions offline and we had a series of meetings yesterday so I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, this year. Players in the Vodafone Flying Fijians camp are disappointed with what they will receive for Sunday's test match against England at Twickenham. Meanwhile, the England versus Fiji match kicks off at 3.30 a.m. on Sunday and you can catch it live on FPC TV. The Pacific Cup football tournament will be played in Fiji for the first time beginning tomorrow. Two teams from New Zealand, a team each from Australia and America and six local teams will go head-to-head -head in 60-minute matches over the next five days. Meli Tavanga reports. The Pacific Cup kicks off tomorrow. 60-minute games promising lots of excitement for fans. The other games we have played over two weekends. We, when we play 90 minutes, we play over two weekends, and here we could not afford to play two weeks. We can, cannot hold the overseas team and other teams back in the country for two weeks. Fiji Football Association Chief Executive Bob Kumar says the tournament will only be played over one weekend, and Fiji FA has decided to reduce the time of the matches. When they play abroad, they play on a 60 minute because it's more or less of a tournament type. When they play on Sunday and Sunday, you'll see some of the teams playing two games in a day. And definitely, I mean, if we are playing 90 games, then we have to spread the game over, over, over two weekends, which is not possible. Kumar also promises the Pacific Cup tournament will be bigger and better this year. The tournament should be an exciting one, and uh, our people here uh, would be able to see some of our uh, former players that have gone abroad and um, coming back to play as veterans, and some of them are still playing actively for the, for the countries that they are representing. Football fans get to watch 23 top-class matches when the Pacific Cup kicks off at Nandi's Prince Charles Park tomorrow. Meli Tabanga, FBC Sports. The Fiji Primary Schools Athletics Championship started in Lambasa today with athletes from around Vanu Levu participating. As Eleanor Turangaviu reports, it's an opportunity to expose raw talent. Students braved the heat of the sun today as the 2016 Northern Chow Games kicked off at Subrail Park in Lambasa. The glaring heat did nothing to prevent these young athletes from making their zone proud. It's really hot in Lambasa, so the only advice that, uh, that we give to the teachers is for the children to drink a lot of water and uh, the athletes if they could have an ice bath so that uh, they cool the body and prepare them for the game tomorrow. The Fiji Primary Schools Athletics Association is impressed with the level of competition displayed by the students on the first day of the games. The level of uh, competition is uh, it's getting tough uh, every year. Like uh, when they first started the Chow Games, uh, it was only a few zones. But now, uh, even Yanuda from Taviuni has sent a team to participate in this. Uh, this. So that shows that uh, the competition has uh, intensified and it's also getting tough. 12 zones are participating in the two-day meet with 12 main events. Come tomorrow, the organizers are hoping for a packed Subrail Park and even better competition. It's the pinnacle of the match tomorrow, and uh, I'm asking the general public in the Lambasa RF to come and support the, the children, uh, the children who will be the future athletes, future sports women and sports men of uh, this country and uh, come and support them. The Child Games brings students, teachers and parents from across Vono Levo together to witness our future elite athletes showcasing their talents. Eleanor Turangeview, FBC Sports. This year, for the first time, all matches of the annual Mbule FM Marist Volleyball Tournament will be played indoors. 32 teams will battle it out at Suva's FMF Gymnasium and the Vodafone Arena. Meanwhile, some teams wishing to take part had to be turned away after missing the registration deadline. We've had some uh, uh, clubs that came in in the last minute, some called us uh, this morning, but uh, we had to turn them back because uh, the residence was closed and all the draws was, uh, was announced uh, this morning, so we cannot... Uh, we feel for them, but uh, as I said, uh, the competition has to go on. Meanwhile, today, major sponsor Bulla FM handed over $25,000 for this year's event. Also announced at the Czech presentation, FBC TV will air delayed coverage of matches from this year's tournament. This partnership gives us an opportunity to continue our support towards volleyball, and you know, it's, it's uh, gone out and produced. Lots of household names uh, like Vakadeng uh, Wolesi, Sakusa Mboletawa, Nimilote Nua. 
and uh, we hope that you know this year there's going to be more stars that are going to be uh, in the forefront of this tournament. The two-day tournament begins uh, this Friday. Substitute Taylor Christensen scored a dramatic last-minute winner to help New Zealand to a hard-fought 1-0 victory over an unlucky Ghana on the opening day of Group C action at the 2016 FIFA Women's Under-20 World Cup in Papua New Guinea. The match was an entertaining affair, played at a good tempo throughout, but New Zealand's Nadia Ola was by far the busiest of the two goalkeepers and produced several key saves. That's it from Sports This Evening. Business is up next with Jackie. Airports Fiji Limited has signed a $4 million deal to replace its voice communication system and VHF radio communication system. AFL Executive Chairman Faiz Khan says the upgrades are timely as the company goes through a modernization phase. The project will provide greater operational efficiency between air traffic controllers and aircraft in the 6 million square kilometers of the Nandi flight information region. This will be achieved through modern internet protocol voice communication solutions. Australian company Harris C4I Limited is responsible for the upgrades. It was a hot breezy day across Fiji with mainly cloudy skies. Suvaba and Lombasa were recorded the warmest centers at 31 degrees, the rest trailed at 30. For tomorrow, settled sunny conditions will linger in most parts of the nation. And our further outlook, we're looking further on to Thursday. Much of the country will enjoy warm conditions with sunny spells and cool south winds. At sea, east to southeast winds, 10 to 15 knots, moderate seas. Recapping the main stories for tonight, multi-million dollar tax evasion uncovered by Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority, Ethel K Affairs Ministry concerned with increasing reports of child abuse and bridging the trade gap between Fiji and Australia. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. We are not able to bring you the results from last week's poll question due to technical difficulties. And this week, we are asking, is social media becoming a problem for Fiji? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. That was news tonight from the team and I. Good night. Bula FM, number 2 and a Bula FM, number 2 and a Bula FM, number 2 and a